Well, especially during the first century, the time when all the writers of the New Testament lived, virtually all of the known believing congregations were Jewish synagogues. And broadly speaking, whatever Gentiles came to Christ attended those synagogues, and they worshipped alongside believing Jews. Now, please note, I am carefully avoiding using the word churches to label these messianic congregations mainly led by Jews. That's because the mental picture that we draw when we think of a church is as a group of Gentile believers in Christ meeting in a building constructed or purchased for that purpose. In Greek, which is the earliest manuscripts of the New Testament that we possess, they're written in Greek, the word that our English Bibles translate into church is ecclesia. And ecclesia is a rather generic Greek word meaning assembly, or in a religious context, congregation. Church is an English word. So it came several centuries later. And at one point, it became substituted for the Greek ecclesia, long after the Messianic movement had been taken over by Gentiles and Jews were excluded. The facilities where Christians met became known by English speakers as churches. And the overall body of Christians was then labeled the church. Thus, by replacing the word ecclesia with church in our English Bibles, an anachronism was created. That is, a concept that did not exist in the first century AD has been injected into that era by Bible translators who came much later. So the notion of an exclusively Gentile group of Christ believers called the church was now written into New Testament history and the presence of Jewish believers and leadership evaporated. Therefore, only occasionally in our study of Revelation will I use the words church or churches as though simply are not there in the Scriptures. And it paints a less than accurate picture of what the New Testament expresses. 